Civil War, let's talk about it. I had an opportunity to see the movie early. It was an IMAX early screening. And I've said it before, I'm not a fan of IMAX, but but I might, I'm becoming a believer. I'm, I'm getting there. There's been quite a bit of talk surrounding this movie. It makes me ask the question, is the movie highly anticipated or is the media just talking about it a lot, giving us the illusion that it's highly anticipated? I'm curious. That has nothing to do with whether or not the movie is good, but marketing obviously pays, plays a role in the box office and having seen this, I hope this movie does well. I feel like this movie deserves to do well, but we're gonna get into it. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way. So the movie's called Civil War, directed by Alex Garland, stars Kirsten Dunst, Kaylee Spaney, Wagner Maura, Stephen McKinley Henderson, Nick Offerman, Jesse Plemons. So somewhere in the not too distant future, the United States has been torn apart, split into fours. You have the Loyalists, you have the New People's Army, you have the Florida Alliance, which is Florida and mostly the Southern states. And then you have Western Forces, which is California and Texas. Before we get into too deep, quick little warning. I am in the city of New Orleans. We are under a thunderstorm warning and a tornado watch. So I'm gonna do my best, but you might hear some things. Also, I filmed this on my iPhone and I keep getting weather warning alerts that apparently are not blocked by Do Not Disturb. I just got one for a flash flood warning. I'm like, what am I supposed to be scared? It's New Orleans. If it drizzles too hard, it floods. What was I even talking about? We are dropped into the denouement so to speak, of this war. It looks like it's nearing the end. The Western forces are weakening and the Loyalists are going to win. At least that's what we're being led to believe. We open with a announcement from the president. We can see him kind of rehearsing what he's going to say. And I really want to watch the movie again because there was something about that opening that was just chilling. And I think because it's so familiar, just the way he talks, the way he addresses the public, it, it's no different than the way the president speaks and the way the president addresses us. It, it's just very familiar. And I think that, you know, gives credibility to the verisimilitude of the story that this could really happen. Um, the major players here are no different than what we, we see and hear every single day. So we're dropped into kind of the end of the war and we're following four journalists who are very much aware that things seem to be winding down. And there's one story left to get, and that's an interview with the president. Now we have Joel played by Wagner Maura, who is a journalist and he specializes it seems in interviews and asking questions and he wants to give an interview. He wants to interview the president. The president has not given an interview in 13 or 14 months. We have Lee, who is a well-renowned photojournalist, and she wants to take the picture. And then we have Sammy, who is just wanting to get a ride to Charlottesville. Um, he's a bit of an old head. He is what's left, so to speak, of legacy media. He works for the New York Times. And they get a stowaway, so to speak, uh, Jesse. Jessie is an aspiring photojournalist. She really looks up to Lee and she wants to learn from her and she wants to go along for the ride. So we're following these four journalists on their way to, from New York to DC, hopefully to somehow get into the White House so they can interview the president. So this story is told through the eyes of journalists and that made me a little suspicious going into the movie because our relationship currently outside of cinema between you know the public and journalists is very shaky. Journalists have forgotten their purpose. They've forgotten their job. That their loyalty should be to us and not the government. Their you know priority is to give us the truth, whatever it may be, and let us wrestle with it instead of trying to move us in one direction or another. So knowing that we're following journalists, I, I was a little apprehensive because what I don't know if I can trust the direction they're taking us in, but I have to remind myself this is a movie. This is one person's interpretation of this profession and maybe I should just trust him with that. So we're, we're seeing this war through the eyes of journalists 
And, and this is where the movie gets so interesting because I think for photojournalists, especially when you have these journalists who have been in the middle of this war, seeing the dirty, the ugly, the gritty, the nasty, and the good, the bad, and they're seeing it from both sides. So they really have no opinion. They're very neutral. They're just there to capture the images and put them out there for the world to see. That is their job. So I think when you do something like that for a very long time, you get so used to seeing something so ugly you become desensitized to it you start to see a beauty in it that shouldn't be seen and I think when your job is art in a way especially for a photojournalist you you see the art in the captured image you see the art in the making of that image and we're seeing that through their eyes but at the same time the way this story is written, the way it's shot, we're given this up close look because they're photojournalists, they're up there in the faces of everything that's happening, but we're also kept at a distance in a way. And we're allowed to kind of observe and view and feel these images the way we would normally feel them if we were reading a newspaper or reading a magazine. You know, that sense of unsettled, you know, disgust, you know, just that feeling of discomfort and just despair, depression. We're, we're allowed to feel those things while seeing them through the eyes of someone who is very desensitized to the images. There are moments where they're looking at just complete destruction and chaos and they're just in awe of it. And yet here we are the audience seeing these things and we're just like, oh my gosh, how awful. You know what I mean? Like, how, how did he do, how, did, how was he able to do these two things at once? you know, allow us to see something through a very specific lens while also being allowed to feel things through our own perspective, our own perspective and our own understanding of just destruction. Like, how did he do that? He did it. I don't know how he did it. I would love to know the process. That has to be something in the writing. There has to be. This is another movie where sound plays a key role in the storytelling. This movie is very loud and it's very violent. I feel like if you're going to see this, you need to see this. And I've said the same thing with Dune. You need to see this movie in a theater that has a very large screen and a great surround sound system. Now down here where I live, we have Prime Theaters and we have IMAX. Now I know AMC, they have, you know, 4D experience here, Dolby Digital, you know, different things in different places. But finding a version of maybe a Prime Theater where you can feel the sound. The sound is not just, you know, to your left and to your right, but it's also above you and below you, behind you. It's, it's very surround sound. It gives you a very 4D experience with the sound. You can literally feel the bass. Um, I would highly recommend that for this kind of movie. If you're someone who can't handle loud sounds. Now keep in mind, this is a war movie. So there's gunfire, there's explosions, there's screams, crying, there's blood everywhere. It's very violent, very gruesome, very raw. Nothing is left to the imagination. You see everything. So quick warning. If you're someone who can't handle that, this may not be for you. You might want to wait until you can hit a pause button, but I highly recommend seeing this in theaters. Um, if you're someone who can't handle stuff like that, unless it's like a physical issue, medical issue, I honestly suck it up. This is a must see. Unless it's like a physical or a mental issue, you know, bear with it. You know, you know, take it like a lactose intolerant person, you know, drinking a milkshake you're gonna be fine at the end, I promise, and it's gonna be worth it. The cinematography, the way the film is shot, just the um, framing choices and perspective choices, balance between three different things. We have kind of the normal human perspective of shooting things, and then when we get into actually looking at the war scene, so to speak, it's very documentary style, but we also have this moment, these moments where we're actually, through looking at things the way a photographer would look at them. So we're, we're seeing certain shots and images through the eyes of a camera lens. You know, we're seeing things kind of come in and out of focus. We have moments where we're almost visually seeing the thought process of someone who takes photographs, how they, you know, um, position the camera, how they frame the image. I think if you've ever taken photography or any, even a film class, you learn about, you know, just splitting it into threes and you understand foreground, middle ground and background. And so the, the, the thought choices that go into it, it really is almost a behind the scenes look of what it takes to get the perfect shot. It's beautiful in that way. And you kind of see the thought, like I said, the thought process deciding what's important in the frame. 
um, the guy who's speaking kind of in the background, is it okay to blur him out? Is the, should the focus be the two guys on the ground trying to snipe someone in a building very far away? Um, should the focus be the grass in front? You know, you have these guys doing this very violent thing, this guy who's in the middle of this very violent thing, who's very much ignoring the very violent thing that's happening, but right, but they're in this field of flowers, you know, weeds, beautiful. Should that be the focus? We're, we're giving these options and these opportunities to see something so ugly and so nasty and so dirty and so evil. The truth and reality that of war that is gruesome no matter what side you're on, it's gruesome and it's ugly. We're, we're given the opportunity to see the shades of beautiful, if that makes sense. While also feeling the pain of it all. It's, it's very interesting how this movie keeps tension, builds tension, and then just kind of brings you along and almost drags you along, whether you want to go or not. So this point right here about the writing and almost the political angle of the movie, or lack thereof, I'm just going to kind of mash this all into one. So I do my little TikTok review, right? And I post it on TikTok, obviously, then I repurpose it on Instagram and then on YouTube. Just a fresh reaction. I just got out the theater. These are my instant thoughts. So they're not all of my thoughts, but they're just the ones that are still fresh on my mind. And one of the things that I was most impressed with concerning this movie was how there was no political angle. Um, again, we, we learn at the very beginning that the Western forces make up Texas and California. In real life, in everyday real life, these, I mean, if we were to say who is an alliance in the United States and who are enemies, I think we would all agree that Texas and California are very much enemies. Um, to think that they will be fighting a war on the same side, it makes you wonder what could have possibly happened that not only would California secede from the Union, but California would join forces with Texas. What could have possibly happened? The thing is, number one, we're not told why the war is happening. Again, we are dropped into the story at the very near end of this war. We're not told what happened or why. We're not told who's right and who's wrong. We're not told whose side to be on and whose side not to be on. Um, we're kind of left to figure things out on our own. And someone left a comment on YouTube, I wish I'd screenshot it, um, how respectful Alex Garland was in the way he wrote this script, respectful of us of, of the audience. And I think that goes into the lack of heavy handedness in the political messaging and that there isn't one. But doing my TikTok review, I, I commented that there is no political leaning here this doesn't lean right it doesn't lean left it's really just here's a story here it is do whatever you want with it process it however you choose we are given that option intentionally given that option and the intentionality is in the fact that texas and california are joining forces we're autumn we're, we're we come into this confused wondering what could have possibly happened that texas and california would be at odds so we have two states that are politically different one's very right one's very left and it kind of forces us to rethink the way we view things politically i think when you have something that's happened that would force right and left to come together and fight a war together it does that it, it, it confuses you intentionally enough that you're able to you want to follow along and to see where things go but because our protagonists are so neutral their only upset seems to be the fact that they don't have access to the president, that he hasn't been accessible, that he hasn't been accessible for interviews, that he's in his third term. They are disgusted with decisions that he's made in terms of how he treats other Americans. But in terms of who's right in the war and who's wrong, we're not given that. We're left to figure that out on our own. But this is my point is that in spite of what I said, intentionally said in my TikTok review, that this movie doesn't lean one way or another, I still have people in my comment sections, mainly on Instagram and TikTok asking, is this movie political? Is it woke? Like I said what I said, but again, what I said was towards the end of the review. So clearly if you're asking that, you didn't listen to the entire review. You're probably still listening and you asked that question or you just didn't listen to the review in its, in its entirety or you just completely missed that part. But the fact that that question was asked in the first place is what bugs me. Mm. And this is where I, you know, tip my hat off to Mr. Alex Garland, our writer and director, this original screenplay, by the way, this isn't an adaptation. I mean, that's refreshing to see an original screenplay. It's not an adaptation. It's not a remake. You know, it's not a reboot. It's not a requel. 
It's not part of some franchise. This is an original story. We don't get quality original stories anymore. So I would embrace it for that very reason. But you know, hats off to him and thank you, sir, for giving us a story and not a sermon. And the fact that we even ask these questions before we go and watch movies that come out of Hollywood, is this movie political? Is this movie, you know, going to preach something to me? Is this movie just trying to sway me one way or another? Is this movie trying to indoctrinate me to feel a certain way? Whether or not these questions are valid, and I think they are because we've seen this pattern, Holly, pattern in Hollywood where it seems they're trying to push an agenda or force an agenda or push their own opinion on the public without really knowing or understanding where the public is on said subject. Um, people want to know before they buy a ticket, is this going to entertain me or is this is going to try to sway me? It's nice to see movies that are intelligent enough to connect with the audience. They know their audience. It seems that Mr. Garland has figured out that audiences don't want to be preached to. They don't want a sermon, they want a story. I, I hope to see more of this. I hope to see less of Hollywood trying to force its very out of touch um, opinion onto the American public more so. Just give us quality stories. Just give us quality movies. If we learn something in the process, that's a bonus. If you can take a lesson and somehow weave it into the plot without making us feel like we're being preached at, that's skill. Not every director can do that. Most directors can. A lot of directors are so focused on making sure they push the right message or making sure you feel a certain way instead of just entertaining you, instead of trusting you, the audience, to unravel things yourself and you know being okay with people interpreting your film one way or the other art is subjective we're not all approaching art the same way we don't all have an understanding of art at the same level and you know we're all in different places in our lives so different things are going to be mean different things to different people and that's okay that's beautiful i think if you can put out a piece of work and people interpret it differently or mean something or connects to them in some way that's different from the person sitting on the left or the right you've succeeded and i don't understand why hollywood doesn't see that as success personal gripe it's wonderful to see kirsten dunce on screen i think this is her first movie since the power of the dog that was what 2018 ish it's so it's it's been several years since she's been on screen. Was that 2018? Now I gotta look it up. Pause for dramatic effect. 2021. I was not close. So um, yeah, this is her first feature film since 2021, since The Power of the Dog, where she was nominated for Best Actress, if I remember correctly. And I think she gives a very compelling performance. We have a woman who has been hardened and who has kind of lost hope and lost faith. And she's starting to question why she does what she does and if there's any purpose to it at all. And then we have Kaylee Spaney who plays Jessie, this newcomer who um, admires Lee, played by Kirsten Dunst, and her work. And she gets an opportunity to see why what she does matters. There's a moment in the movie where they say, you know, we're not gonna be here forever. They feel this responsibility that they have to keep this thing going, this journalism, this truth telling, this truth showing thing that they do. They have to keep it going. You know, we're not gonna be here forever. Somebody has to come up after us. And they have this opportunity to really train and instill these values into this young woman. And there are moments in the movie that I have mentioned this in my TikTok, how I thought it was just so beautiful. You can see them training her and guiding her and teaching her where to stand, where to be, you know, how to stay out of the way, how to be in the way, how to keep yourself safe and really passing on that legacy. And you're seeing three different generations of journalism here. You have legacy veteran journalism journalist Sammy, who worked for the New York Times. You have these, um, you know, up and coming veterans and Lee and Joel. And then you have newcomer Jesse. So you're, you're seeing the makings of a legacy in this movie. And, and it also lends to the sadness that in spite of all the destruction, life must go on. Life has to continue. 
And also this, you know, perpetual need that we have as human beings that what we do matters, that my life has some kind of purpose, and that when I'm gone, I'm not just gone, but I've left something behind. I've left a piece of myself behind. I think that part is very relatable. For me personally, I don't know where this falls in terms of favorites of the year. Dune is obviously number one, and this is somewhere up there. Um, this is, without a doubt, one of the best movies of the year. This is going to be a tough one to beat. I think um, Denis Villeneuve and Alex Garland have, they just walked into 2024 and said, we're here to compete and we're here to win. I think there's definitely Oscar potential for this movie. I would definitely say sound. Um, Dune has competition for sound. I think if this isn't nominated in some way for best sound, that would be a tragedy. I think you could make an argument for best original screenplay, best director. I, I think, why not? Um, I think it's a little too early to talk about acting nods, but Kaylee Spaney, I think is gonna be the performance that stands the test of time in terms of going into award season, but definitely Kirsten Dunst is also gonna be someone that people would talk about if we're talking about acting from this movie. But if I were A24 and I were campaigning this for, you know, awards, I, I would push Kaylee Spaney more than I would Kirsten Dunst. For, competi for competition's sake. I really, 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 really hope this movie does well box office wise I want this movie to do well when when a movie is this good I it needs to do well it deserves to do well this needs to be seen it's beautiful this was just beautiful it was a beautiful movie it was a beautiful portrait disturbing unsettling a, you know I mean when was the last time you saw a good dystopian movie in theaters when was the last time here you go I know you've been wanting one when times are what they are dystopian films are some of the most comforting now as visually raw and terrifying as this movie can be there's something comforting in the dystopian knowing that even when things do fall apart things go awry there is hope in the ashes so to speak you hear the rain can you hear the rain i love new orleans when it rains this, this city is so pretty when it rains okay quick tangent if you ever come to new orleans number one check the weather in the summer because there's a period in the summer where it rains for like a month and a half straight but because this was the the sun is so bright here when the city when it rains after it's done raining and the sun comes out the city just glistens in a way that's just oh so beautiful but i digress that's all i've got for civil war I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for sticking through. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the movie. It comes out this weekend. I love you. You're amazing. And I will see you next time.